Hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of Standridge on Standridge or SOS as I am calling it. So this is going to be kind of my forum to just kind of talk about whatever. It might be music, it might be my life, it might be just strange things that are you know going on, but it's just going to be whatever I want it to be at the moment. So today we're going to talk about why I would not survive a horror movie and I have proof. The thing that I'm about to tell you is a true story. Um, it's going to sound a little fantastical, but swear to God, true story. I would not believe it myself had I not actually been the person who experienced it. So those of you that um, uh, might might know me from social media or whatever uh, probably know that I really like scary movies. Like I like ghost stories. You know, Stephen King is my favorite author. But um, and I like those things because they genuinely scare me. Um, you know, it's not because like oh I just enjoy the you know whatever. It's, I mean, I am their target audience. I get very worked up in a horror movie and I get very genuinely scared. Um, in particular, ghost stories. Like, ghost stories get under my skin more than anything else. So anyway, in addition to that hobby, I really like to do photography. Um, so I'll go out and, you know, photograph landscapes. Um, I've done, uh, you know, a little bit of modeling, I'm happy to say. And not that I'm that great looking, but I can hold a pose, you know. So, um, but... Uh, one of my very favorite things to photograph are abandoned buildings. Um, I love find, finding like places that are just abandoned or ruined and photographing them. So anyway, bringing this back to the story at hand, there was this house out in a farm field. Um, I live in Jonesboro, Arkansas, you know, very rural um, farm fields all around. Uh, we're in the Delta, so very flat, you know, lots of farmland. And there's this house out in this field uh, not far outside of Newport, which is about 45 minutes from here. And I'd always wanted to photograph it because it was just kind of creepy looking. It had this big tree out front and it uh, just, I don't know, it just looked creepy and kind of neat. And I thought it would take great photography, especially like black and white photography. But I had one particular thing I wanted to happen. I wanted it to, I wanted to photograph it in the snow. And we don't get a lot of snow down here in the south, or at least in this part of Arkansas. We get a lot of ice, so those of y'all that say that southern drivers can't drive on snow, wrong. We can drive on snow just fine. The problem is we drive on ice. So anyway, I was waiting for that perfect moment, and this was back when I was a teacher. So we had this one day where it finally snowed. It snowed about three inches, and it was just keeping on snowing. It was really coming down. So we were out of school, um, so I had the day off. And I was like, man, this is the perfect opportunity. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go uh, photograph that house. So I, uh, you know, told Steve, I was like, Steve, I'm going to go do this. And he's like, oh, whatever. Just, you know, take your phone. Um, and uh, so I went and this drive would normally take me between 30 to 45 minutes. But it actually took me two hours because it was snowing so hard. I mean, there was nobody on the road except a stupid band director at the time going, oh, I'm going to go photograph this abandoned house. So anyway, um, I get to the house and I'm just excited. I go around and I start taking, you know, pictures all around the outside. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, it looks amazing. Um, incidentally, this was, you know, uh, to show you how old I am, this was before digital photography. So you know, it became a big thing. So I was doing this on films. I mean, I couldn't even see the pictures. I just like taking that reloading, all that stuff like that. And, um, so I'm going around the house, you know, just kind of, doing my thing and I, of course you know I start to wonder I'm like I wonder what it looks like inside so I walk up and I go inside the um, inside the uh, the carport and you know there so I get in there and it becomes very quiet because like you're not aware of it when it's snowing but snow really does make a sound there's a really soft like you know shushing shushing sound very gentle when it's snowing and so I go in that carport and it just goes dead silent. All the hair on my arms and back stand up. I'm just like, oh gosh, this is creepy. And there was abandoned like detritus inside the carport. So there was like an abandoned baby doll because that's not creepy. And, uh, you know, like just all this stuff. And I'm just like, oh, this is weird. But I took pictures and kept going. So I, um, there's an entrance way from the carport into the house and I go in there and it's in the kitchen. And like all the drawers have been pulled out. Everything, uh, you know, is just a mess. And I hear, the, like, there's this voice inside my head, what I call the evil little man. And he whispers to me, he says, this looks like the type of place somebody would get murdered in. And of course, I mean, I've already got, you know, like, goosebumps, and now they're just, like, armies of goosebumps. I'm just like, oh. But I'm just like, okay, you know, this is fine, this is fine. 
So I keep going inside the house. I go into the living room. Now, this is important. So I go into the living room, and, like, there's an archway. And so I'm not looking behind me. I'm looking forward. I go to the archway, and I'm immediately aware of the fact that there is a, a mattress, like a bed mattress, in the living room. And it suddenly occurs to me, like, there could be somebody, like, squatting here, like, staying here. You know, it could be, you know, just, you know, somebody nice, or it could be, you know, a crazy person. So I start to get, you know, really freaked out. I take a couple pictures, and I'm like, okay, I am out of here. Like, this is enough pictures, I'm getting out of here. So I turn around, and this is what I see. Like, across the, um, the archway, going back into the kitchen, somebody had spray painted, and to this day, I don't know what this means, and I don't want to know what this means. But it just said, give us your children. And I'm just like... And, but I'm just like standing there so scared I can't make myself move. Now, from the back of the house, I hear a thump. I hear boom. There's this like hallway off to my left that's going into the back of the house. All of the windows have been like papered over um, that I could have seen from outside. And um, so it's this long, dark hallway going up to that. I hear a thump from back there and I just freeze. Now, I am the person that when I'm watching a scary movie and they go towards the danger, I'm the person that is always, why would they do that? That is so stupid. You are so dumb. And yeah, I'm just talking to the screen and being like, I would never do that. What do I do in this situation? I hear the bump. I've got my camera and I go just like this. Hello? <laughs> And inside my head, I'm like, there's the rational part of my brain screaming, just going, going, this, you, you always scream at people doing this. You would never do this. And, and, but I just, and then do I leave? No. I inch closer to the dark hallway going off into nothing. And again, I say, hello. <laughs> and so then a few things happen like all at once. I hear another thump, a really loud one this time, like, bam. And that freaks me out. I take off running. Now, during this whole time, it has been snowing its butt off, which is not common in Arkansas. So I, you know, run out the kitchen door, run to, and I hit the snow. And for those of you that live or have been through snow before, you know, you can't run in snow. Well, I mean, even if it's just four or five inches deep, you can't really run in it because it slows you down. So like, I stop and I turn around because I'm like, if somebody's chasing me, like, I'm not going to get away from them. I have to turn around and, and at least have a fighting chance. So, you know, the country boy me kind of gets up. I'm just like, yeah, you know, we're, we're going to be ready to go. So, uh, but there's nobody there. Do I leave? No. I start walking around the house trying to see this person that I think is following me. So I go back around to um, the, uh, the back of the house, which I hadn't been to before. And I see that there's one window that is broken out. And there's a closet door in that room, you know, in the wind that's going thump, thump. And I have that moment where I just go, oh, God. And then I'm like, okay, I need to get out of here. And then I notice something that will haunt me to the for the rest of my days. I look down at the ground as I'm getting ready to get out of here. And from the house, going out into the woods in the back, are footprints in the snow. Keeping in mind that it has been snowing this entire time, so that, you know, those footprints were relatively fresh. So, obviously, somebody was in the house. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the story. This has been the first episode of SOS, Standard John Standridge. I hope everybody's staying safe, washing them hands, uh, coughing into your elbow, and social distancing. We all need to do our part. We basically have three jobs right now. Uh, try to avoid getting the virus. Uh, try to avoid passing on the virus. And third, be good to each other. So as always, everybody, peace, love, and music.